Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. I'm Timothy. And we're back answering your questions um, about ACES EFI, EFI in general. Um, talking about some person that may be interested in fuel injection. Um, and listening to the wonderful train go by as we do our introduction. So, uh, Tim, as we always begin, any questions, quibbles, fashion statement tips before we get started? Jump into the questions. Mm, I don't really have any. I don't really have anything. My well is quite dry today. I believe that I've said all I need to say <laughs> um, as it goes. No, it's it's fantastic. Don't if you work in an office, don't forget your polo shirt. You know, if you're going to be filming with your buddies, make sure to use decent microphones. Um, <laughs> but outside of that, um, I really think we should just get into the questions. I see a statement about some Depeche Mode right there. Let's Oof. go. Uh, all right. I'll, then in that case, I'll le- let you handle question one. Pauled eight eight sixty nine. What? No, I, I, I'm, I'm right here. Tim, Depeche Mode, did a song called Stripped, sampling a slowed four stroke motorcycle single pot. Yeah, I'm old. That's neat. I looked I that up. <laughs> what song Stripped? So, like I, was, like I was talking about making all the car noises and remixing everything. You remember mm-hmm. that before? Uh, I think that's. Oh, that's, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that, I forgot about that. That was huh. not too long ago, dude. But yeah, that's. Um, wow. It's a popular thing. If you and there's like so many uh, songs that have come out mainly since about the late '70s, where mm-hmm. somebody was looking for a noise in music, and they actually found it in an old hot rod or a car, or was you know really? took the inspiration of a hot rod and made music with it. Question two, Doc four two four four EFA says, please do a video on the quick draw and how to tune it on shift point settings. Would like to have nice cruise settings and high performance settings. Also, if possible, thanks. Oh, neat. That's yeah. pretty neat. It's on the old quick draw. We we shot a little video action on the introduction of it just earlier today. Yep. The uh, Behind the product video uh, mm. released for um, this week will be on the quick draw um, and then some installation of that unit with both the kill shot and the quick draw. We're going to do this at the same time and just split the video, honestly, because they, they go hand in hand really yep. well, especially on a project we're using it on. So we're going to do... Not blending the two together, but we're going to shoot one whole thing yeah, and, and the other one in the same go. And um, yeah. that way we there's a lot more when it comes to setting everything up and doing all the initial adjustments and wizardry that we do. Uh, right. We'll be running into um, it just flows better that way. Yes. So I do want to do the handheld adjustment and initial setup. And then with like with all of our systems, everything you can do through the handheld for road tuning and then get a little bit more involved on the dyno. Right. Getting some real proper nerd stuff with right. the laptop. Yep. Um, so, any like short answer to the question? Stay tuned. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for more. David Cunningham. Yes. Double lot. I need some spark tuning advice on a jackpot system. Hmm. Yeah. Man, you should have laid that answer out. I was in a mood too. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, yeah, spark tuning. Uh, LS LS systems with a jackpot. You're not going to run as much timing on a. Um, on an LS as you are on an old classic motor, an old mm. small block Chevy or Ford or what have you not. It's a super efficient motor. So with a more efficient motor, you have to use less timing because you're looking at your octane rating and your timing, the sure. construction of your pistons and cylinder heads and so on and so forth. And you're looking at that that ratio between when fuel is deflagated in the cylinder versus detonating in the cylinder. And there's all these factors that goes into what good timing is. Mm-hmm. So... I wonder also needing spark tuning advice on the jackpot system, kind of some of the things that we've actually answered relatively recently on mm. this um, show, podcast, whatever you want to call it, um, is those coils. So recently we had a, we had a promotion um, that gave away either LS coils or the full house. And with those full house um, setups, I believe that there were also... Um, including instead of just the regular LS coils, but the full house coils. So depending on what you have, David, it, you may be running into an issue with um, those coils, and maybe you're using just the uh, full house coils without the full house unit. Not really sure, taking a shot in the dark based on the information given, but um, if you have, um, if you need more specific help with um, spark tuning, um, give our tech department um, an email, shoot them an email, or call customer service and get uh, in for a tech call, and one of them can reach out to you um, 
We also have some forums for advice um, on Facebook if you want to check that out. Um, a lot of guys in there uh, talking every single day, talking about the product, talking about things that they're running into and how to solve them. Um, it's a very helpful location as well. Um, but, yeah. Or we'll hit you next week with uh, if you got any more updates for us. So, cool. Yeah. Okay. B5S0H5EOL5FOM. Does that make sense? Good name. Any update on the alpha and tuning for the jackpot? This would appeal to a lot more users than you'd think. It would be great if I did not have to give my jackpot a new home just because I wanted to use the ITBS. Uh, yes, I know it's map tunable, but it requires a good bit of table resolution. Double whammy here. Wow. So, Alpha N mm -hmm. is a different type of map. Uh, speed density, what we use, which is map sensor RPMs, right? So, that's literally speed density fills in the field table. When you're using mm -hmm. ITBs, individual throttle bodies, like, you know, one per cylinder type deal, um, like 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 dual quad or uh, oh or god no six no it's just eight like on a on an LS would be eight individual throttle bodies one per cylinder whoa individual throttle bodies ITBs now hmm. depending on the style of ITBs you got is whether it has a collective uh, plumb in the bottom of it and then they run through the cylinders like that where you can do a map tunable situation which gets interesting because uh, how all the air tumbles through there and does its job. It's a little bit funny, so it could be very um, not so friendly. And there's a thing about here about requires good table resolution, uh, mm -hmm. which is true. I found with the jackpot tuning that if I've, I'm trying to work in between on the table, I will do some trickery and use the learning table mm -hmm. in an open loop to fill in some in-between values, especially with, some, with a big, nasty, spicy camshaft. So, because, you know, our learning table's huge, our field table's small. Yeah. The huge, uh, the huge learning table has a lot more resolution, so you can fill in all these little blanks in between. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't realize that, hey, why don't you just use that, because it calculates everything so quickly as well. So, with the alpha end tuning, that's going to be a situation where it's TPS versus velocity. Yeah. So, that way, wherever your throttle pedal's kicking down at doing a thing by whatever percent, by whatever velocity of the engine is how it's doing its fuel mm. mapping. Mm. Uh, a lot of aftermarket companies as well, they'll do a split table. They'll have an alpha end section for low idle, so on and so forth, and then they'll have a, a speed density table on the top side of that. That way, whenever you're really getting into really making the engine sing a little bit, yeah, it's going to work just fine on the map. But for low, big cam, individual throttle body type situations, mm. alpha end's the way to go. It's just that... It's only fine for certain applications, and it's such a yep. small amount of applications, that's why we haven't done it yet. Mm. It is possible. We just don't have the option to do that yet. That will be a thing down the road to where we're starting to actually either offer our own individual throttle body setup, or we're starting to use see a lot more customers using that, and then we'll start exploring that alpha N setup, if that answers the question. Yeah, that was a very good answer. Yeah. And thanks for explaining the um, individual throttle bodies. I mean, I thought when I when I read that, I just kind of thought when you got the uh, tri um, like double barrels or the dual quads or something like that. But you, it's actually literally individual throttle bodies. It's so I cool. guess I never. They I sound guess good. I never thought of that. I see a few of those out on the drift track, and they just scream. <laughs> Vacord ninety five ex. Any plans to add transmission control for the AODE or for R70W? Seems like you only support GM products so far. Well, we didn't want our controller to rust, so we're going to stay away from forward. <laughs> um, no, we just haven't done it yet. We, we, we're making the, the Chevy stuff work because that's the most common one out there on the market, yep. uh, the 4L60 and 4L80 and 65s and so on and so forth. But, you know, when it comes into the Ford stuff, like – the AODE 4R and 70W and 75W. Mm -hmm. The um, that's it's way less complex. We literally gotta take a big chunk out of our software, and then add a different harness, and then plug it in. But there's two different versions of the connector on that. So there's like the amberish colored connector, and then the black connector, mm -hmm. and all that. And they're a little bit different from year to year, but 
not a massive deal. That is something you could sure. probably expect to see is we'll do four-speed Ford, four-speed Mopar stuff like the 46 RE as well and some 47s, but not probably not the 48 because of all the extra bits on there that we don't want to control. Uh, that's that's something that you know we've recently talked about, but you know we're progressing into finishing out four speed stuff and looking into six speed stuff and yeah. you know the six L eighty and the six uh, R as well, but that's a lot to do. Yes. People people think it's a finger snap away, but no, it's months of programming, researching, asking for permissions, and then breaking a few things and then unbreaking a few things and then making sure it works and then putting it on a test vehicle and giving it all the beans. Yeah. And then making but sure it does its job. It is something that we have talked about. Um, yes. I've, I've even heard it in um, a couple of recent meetings. So it's not something that is not ha- going to happen. Um, but I, some of those Ford uh, transmission uh, controlling aspects, at least in the quick draw even, potentially, um, in the future. So um, oh, yeah. stay tuned for that. Question f- five. Five, five, I don't know. five. That one. Um, Dano four or uh, seven four Z says hello. I have a question on startup in a modern OEM computer controlled car. Um, one gets in and starts the engine immediately. There's no waiting. Every video I see with Aces and other vendors, people turn on the ignition and wait for the computer to boot up before firing the engine. Is this necessary for this boot up to to happen before cranking the engine? Seems so archaic even an older car with a carburetor or an early mid 80s tpi there's there was no waiting get in and fire the engine um well one thing that i do know from the get-go is when you are setting it up is when you um when you're running the start wizard when you're first setting original parameters it's very important to not go and try to start the engine before the computer knows what it's doing um but I'm just going to breathe into the microphone heavily. <laughs> heavily. Um, but I, I mean, I've seen, I have seen people go and, and start the vehicle while uh, on the on the first crank over um, after everything's been uh, tuned and um, even after they've unplugged the handheld because they don't need it anymore. There's a weird psychological thing with that. Okay. And aftermarket systems, the fuel pump cycles the fuel pump will turn on for a couple of seconds mm-hmm. and the screen has time to boot up. Now the computer's already on doing its job. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are honestly waiting for the fuel pressure to be properly built up in the system and for the screen to boot up all the way. It's You can go out there to our LS Swap Blazer, reach in the window, hit the key and start it right up. Then the screen eventually comes on. If it's got fuel in the rail, it's going to do its job. So some systems, they, you know, they're higher performance pump and they'll backflow all that excess fuel pressure back to the tank. If you put in some check valves and keep the pressure up on top, you get in there and you actually hit the key, it'll start. Yeah. You don't have to have to have to wait. I mean, it, we're talking about programming wise startup like 0.8 of a second, maybe less. Yes. I mean, it's literally power on, logic on, doing its job. Right. But like I said before, don't don't you when you're first starting the vehicle and you're using our system, don't try to crank it over when you haven't set original starting parameters in the start wizard um don't do that because that kind of ruins the whole point of having a star wizard <laughs> so mm-hmm. um and obviously in in your case that uh computer is not going to be set up to start building fuel pressure anyway when the start wizard hasn't been set up anyway so um yeah that's a good question actually i haven't seen that one yet whoa Okay, I'll let you I should get my book reading voice <laughs> out. <sighs> Galvin said eighty three fifty. Hey do, guys, I'll do two. I got two questions for you. I got a jackpot with a trans control on a four L eighty E, and sometimes, mainly in slow settings like corners, where I have to slow down from thirty five to fifteen miles an hour when driving. It seems to not downshift, leading leading to my car wanting to cut out. I have to blip the throttle. To get it to downshift and stay alive. Is there a way I can change my shift points to fix this, or is there another issue? 
Um, no, that's just some adjustment stuff. You might, maybe timing, maybe fuel, what have you not. It's just not jiving real good. But you also need to make sure to make sure to verify your VSS sensor data is the same as your GPS data as well. Mm. And you can go in there and change your miles per hour shift points. Um, I was fiddling with that earlier in the advanced tuning software about when do you really want it to shift. You can lower that down just a bit. If you're just cruising with it, it's not really going to give you too much of a headache. But you can mess with downshift parameters. Um, I I've got to get set up to do a whole bunch of transmission tuning soon for a video because we're getting a lot more questions about it. Some people are fine with it. Some people, they get lost in the weeds real fast with having to change three parameters to make a mm. shift good. So I want to make sure to cover that as thoroughly as possible. And then from situation to situation, talk about some of the tuning aspects of the system itself. Um, also, the people here, because um, that's who we're doing it for. Is this another tangent? S no, this is totally not a tangent. Okay. This okay. Is, you know, let us know the tech shorts you want to see. Because, okay. you know, there's always there's a daily brainstorming session that happens around here. And a lot of it is in, in regard to somebody's question on a tech call or on an email or what have you. Not like, hey, this had this question five times this month. Let's just do that. If you guys got suggestions, lay it on us. Because it's either going to be like, mm, that's dynamite. Let's go outside and do this thing right now and put it out. Yeah. And... His uh, Gavin Engston's uh, second uh, point was, since I had my car, I have had occasional issues with starting. Cool. And when it when I get it to start, it won't idle. Mm -hmm. I can re-download the tune to the system, and it starts fine. Should I shut the learn off to stop this? I was just curious because it seems weird that the car won't idle after running for a while, but re-downloading the tune fixes the issue. I'm thinking it might be uh. a fuel primer percent issue because now that I think about it, it ha it hasn't just it haven't just shut the ignition off and turned back to the reprime on the system since it might not be getting enough fuel. It will start under throttle and run for a bit, um, like it did when I had air in f in the fuel system. So I'm thinking it could be this. Let me know your guys' opinions. So say less. What does that say? Show less. Anyways, neat. You do need some tweaking. That's the thing. The, the, the problem A you is having is relative to problem B you're having here for sure. Um, we do have some documents that helps with hard starts and this, that, and the other. It sounds like the original tune that you download is actually pretty okay. Uh, probably needs some tweaks and whatnot, but you might just be having an O2 sensor, putting some weird learn data in. It, depending on your exhaust system, dictates a lot of this stuff too. But after it learns a bit, you might be trying to do a restart, and it's real fat in the VE table in the idle area, and whenever you go to restart it up, it's just fat as can be, doing all kinds of wild stuff, so you're having mm -hmm. to throttle it up and give it some extra air to help compensate against all the extra fuel. Yeah. Um, this is all just small adjustment things. Hit tech up with an email. We'll send you whatever documents we got, our tech documents, and see if any of those things can help you out. If you've got more questions, let us know. But it sounds like you just need a decent tune, and I would – get a good tune on and I would I'd force it in the open loop so there's no other sensor data that can affect your fueling of your car if you got a yeah. good tune sh lock that thing out and send it yeah I mean I've been driving the camper now for well my brother's driving it now but mm -hmm. 30,000 plus miles on an open loop yeah. tune it hits every single time yeah I was gonna say the the longer that you have it in the learn um in the learn settings the more opportunities that it has to relearn on top of itself which can sometimes be a good thing but most of the time I've actually seen that turn out to be not a good thing so um, I kind of like what Tim's saying if you can get a pretty good tune in the vehicle um, turn off the closed loop turn off the the uh, learning uh, mode on the system it's just it never you don't have to deal with it it's just it just is what it is at that point Go, buddy. Okay. There you go. Okay. What is the K for? You keep moving the thing, man. Okay. All right. Stop. Oh, sorry. I was just trying to. <sighs> Insufferable. You muggles. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here you go. Which one you want to do? Next uh, one? The, this one right here. The Sim 6? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned that. <laughs> right. Well, I have a full. Royal Flush Kit that comes with your MSD distributor. We don't have an MSD distributor. MSD does. That I locked out, 
but that means I also have a CDI with the Royal Flush. Mm. It has options for CDI and magnetic, etc. So what do I really select? Assume a magnetic, but is that incorrect? No, it's a Royal Flush. If you're using a magnetic distributor, it's magnetic. Yep. It's a two-wire variable reluctance, just uh, our magnetic distributor. Mm. That's what you set it in the software. That's where it's getting this RPM signal from, and then yep. it does all the other internal business to get spark out to the thing and control timing. Mm. So you got to make sure it's selected correctly for magnetic for our uh, blackjack series. Yep. Uh, if you're using a gambler, for instance, that's a Hall effect, so it puts out this same waveform that a CDI box would. So that would be a whole different thing, different wire. Right. Um, but also you can use those, but the, uh, the top end kit for the Royal Flush, that thing comes with a magnetic setup. Correct. Um, usually that CDI section is for those who have are using an external CDI. Um, since we're the only company that has a CDI box in the ECU of the, um, of the uh, EFI um, or the fueling controlling portion of the ECU, Facts. Um, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Just continue on like business as usual. If you were using a kill shot, you'd use a magnetic pickup distributor. Same thing goes with the Royal Flush uh, magnetic pickup distributor is the same setting that you click in that startup wizard. So, yeah, that's a also a really good question. Two questions I've never seen before. Ba -da, ba -da. Nice. I'm loving this. Um, Ra Raul Fernandez, 7035, can I use MSD two-step LS plug-and-play box with the Aces jackpot uh, LS? Thank you. About to pull the trigger on buying one. I've never put one in. I've seen them used before, yeah. so... Nothing tells me that you shouldn't. I don't. I've never seen any reason why you could not either. I've so. never seen a customer blow one of our systems up with one yet, so that means they must be pretty good, because we don't have one in here in house. It, it'd probably be a neat thing to go ahead and buy one just to play with it a little bit. But we already have like launch controls and a bunch mm -hmm. of other stuff going on with our, our jackpots, so I don't. I don't need to. I don't need to play around with one. We're kind of running out of time here, Tim. Any last minute? Uh, not questions, but suggestions, thoughts, anything like that. Hook it to the battery. Don't yeah. hook it to the starter. Don't hook it to a bus bar. Don't hook it to the alternator. Don't hook it to nowhere else in your car. Just hook it to the battery when it comes to the positive and negative wires. Yep. We get such a headache with people calling in, and then we're trying to diagnose a, a crazy problem. Yep. And, you know, it's it turns into one of those things when we start to diagnose we realize in fact they got it run to a bus bar that's hooked to their alternator and yeah. their their starter and then it finally goes off to the battery so they're sitting there like i got to connect time out and you know you realize that you've already helped yeah. them out twice before and you're like what how is that even hooked up yeah and then the yeah. truth comes out it's yeah. like oh that thing's straight up on the starter so yeah, you cycle out. the key a few times and poof yep. out comes the magic smoke yep that's anybody's system not even ours yep. even if you're running one of our competitor stuff yeah do me a favor for my own personal <laughs> feelings. Hook that thing to the battery. <laughs> I don't mean to sound grumpy about it, but oh my gosh. No, it's funny. Uh, not funny, but I, I, I understand the the um, consistency to that, how often you get that um, Daily. In, uh, in tech support. That wraps us up here for this episode of Tech Tuesday. Did you know that the next episode of Tech Tuesday will be episode 40? We've done this almost 40 times. 40 times sweet so if you like this video please leave a like down below um if you have any questions about aces efi or efi in general please leave a uh comment down below if you have any friends family getting into efi and they need some pointers thinking about going with aces point them our direction we'd love to answer any questions that they may have may might have may might 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 have all right <laughs> and we will like always see all of you in the next video bye for now bye now